Hi, let's see this time how another one of these standard circuits can be designed. Let it be a binary decoder, for example, a decoder 328, and that is quite equivalent to the 74138 commercial chip. And we will go the same way, just repeating the same ideas, symbol, truth table, and you know how to expand it and timing diagram and how to design it the same classic plan a plan b and plan c2 and a special signals like enable and the like and so on. so this is a paper and pen discussion using a, using a white hi if if we have to talk now about another standard circuit like the binary decoder it's going to be something like this. You, in this kind of circuits, you always have a kind of a general symbol right? up to n wires and, for example, this time 2 raised to the power n output wires. So this is the symbol, the generic symbol of a decoder. But, for example, if you are uh, uh, having the example of uh, one of the chips in particular, you may think about the decoder 328. And what is this exactly? Well, it's a symbol that is like that. You have the enable input, always typical in this kind of chips, and then the data input, and then the coded output in, in that way, right? The data D input, 2 down to 0, and then the Y7 down to 0. And then, you know, associated to the symbol, there is always the true table. It goes together as the specifications. That's what we have in mind all the time. Specifications of the chip that later will be planned and implemented. Planned in plan A, plan B or plan C2 for example, as usual. So any one of the circuits can be used to develop completely the several plans that we have in mind all the time. So this, this is the typical symbol, a decoder, three inputs to eight, and that's the true table. You have to place in the left side the inputs and on the right side all the outputs. This time, unlike the multiplexer, this device has uh, a lot of outputs, you see? It looks like that in principle it's a lot more complex than the multiplexer, but it's not going to be that so. Because, you know, you have here a lot of outputs, but the functionality of this device is very simple. Okay? This time, if we start as usual, when you have the chip disabled, doesn't matter the data input code that is applied because what you like is the chip completely disabled and in this case disable means all zeros all the outputs are off and then what well then is imagining the chip decoding playing the function that it has established and this means that if the chip is enabled with a one and for example you are inputting here the binary code zero okay this is what you've got three data inputs so the data inputs means a binary code and from zero up to seven so if you input the zero what you've got here is a one at the a single one right a one in the y zero and then a zero everywhere else so that's the typical output when the circuit is enabled and you are selecting the zero. If the circuit is enabled and you are applying the code one, what you have is a single one now in the output one. You see the outputs are this time like vectors and so the output with an index one has a one when you apply the code one. Zero everywhere else so that's the functionality of the decoder so that you can go down to the end you see so the last value here is when you are applying the code 
seven, one, one, one. So this means a one, at the output seven, indexed as seven, and then zero everywhere else. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So that's the typical table where this is called the, the decoding function. The binary decoding function in a way that you are transforming this binary code you see that is set here by means of this data 2, data 1 and 0. You are transforming this binary code into another kind of code. You are decoding the binary code to another kind of code, which is that, that code has a proper name. You see, it's a code very special. There is only one high at a time or well disabled that's one possibility but when working normally you have a single one so there is only that number of possibilities eight possibilities you have a zero placed in y zero a one placed in y zero another another possibility is a one placed in y one and another possibility is a one placed in y two and down there to the one placed in the y7 that's the decoding and th that code is has a proper name this is a one hot code that's the idea of a single one where every every other output is zeroed this idea is the code one hot that has a proper name it can be just the opposite you know like like when you had in the other circuit as example uh, enable active law so here you can have the same idea just the code just the enable or just the outputs maybe enable law law right in which way well uh, generating another symbol for example like this uh, this is you you may use the same name right because this is just a simple idea of a level adaptation and that's not important at all only it is for you to write the proper name so this is data for example active high two down to zero enable maybe active high or active low as you like doesn't matter you know how it is when active law because we did the multiplexer down to the end so here you may have another set of eight outputs but now maybe leveled like this why active low the same indexes seven down to zero so the table is just like this but the opposite one when disabled okay when disabled you have a high everywhere when enabled and decoding you have a high everywhere exceptuating the output with the corresponding index you know if you are inputting a one you have just a zero at the output one while all the others are zeros and that is right or this is okay yes not a problem for example if in the specific in this specification section if you go and watch for example uh, the data sheet <coughs> of a commercial device okay a device uh, like this you may take for example the example of the 74 HCT or LS doesn't matter the technology just a classical chip 74 uh, 138 that's the typical decoder 3 to 8 and it more or less is like this the only thing is active law the outputs are active law okay once all the time and when working as a decoder only a zero at the corresponding output so this device is practically the one that we have represented here but you know with an extra uh, feature with respect to the enable you, you the, the chip has this symbol okay decoder 
3 to 8, it doesn't matter very much the name, let's better use the same, if you are trying to implement that one, so you will call that D, 3 down to 0, exactly the functionality of this commercial chip, this is going to be 8 wires Y active low, 7 down to 0, low, and then there is this idea of the enable, you indeed have, has, have here three enables, you may call them, well every manufacturer call them in one way or another, for you may call that enable one, enable two active law and enable three active law, something like that is okay, which means that this enabling logic is like this, so you know that it, it is not, well yes right, the true table is larger because it looks like that you have here three and three, six inputs, so 64 combinations are possible, but indeed this control logic is not that uh, is not that complicated, I guess that when you have enable, you have the chip enabled, okay, you may have the typical enabling when you have an AND here and then an AND an AND that works like this. If enable 1 is 1, for example, okay? If enable 1 happens to be 1 and enable 2 active law happens to be 0 and enable 3 also active law is the same as 0, if this is what you've got at these three special inputs, this gate is generating, you know, a 1, because this is a 1 and a 1, 1 and 1 and 1, so this is the output 1, so, and this is when the chip is decoding the other, you know, in, so with this special combination, 1, 0, 0 in this special input, the chip is decoding, just solving the second section of this table, but any other combination, you see, any other combination means disable. So if enable input is 0, 0 and anything else is a 0, so the chip is not going to work as usual. So you can imagine very well this section of the table and you get an enable 1 when you have this uh, specific combination, 1, 0, 0 in the three enabling inputs that this chip has. So the commercial device associated to a decoder is not that different. Then if you watch for another one like a, you know a typical CMOS 40,000 40, chip, a CMOS chip is it's going to have another reference and perhaps I don't know now if you will have three enables or doesn't matter very much, you see? Apart from those specific details, what you've got is this table, okay? Or the active law one, which is in the notes that I've given you to study, accompanying this recording. So, respecting the specifications is not that much to say, okay? You have a symbol that can be 3 to 8, 4 to 16, 5 to 32, and the point is that if you have a 5 to 32, you have this table, 32 terms output wide, and only one one at a time for every out, for every row, you know, every code is just one one, and the like, doesn't matter the size. And, well, now you can finish these specifications, apart from watching some devices, commercial devices, uh, with ideas which are in our course already associated to a given plan, so you know the next thing perhaps is 
talk about plants because this idea of talking about plants also answers the question that is there in the mind map you know the question on how to enlarge this component how to make a larger component using a smaller component for example can you design a decoder 3 to 8 using decoders 2 to 4 several of them and circuits and logic circuits so this is the typical question that perhaps is associated if you like to develop it to the plan c2 okay the same way that we invented the multiplexers 3 to 8 using multiplexers uh, 2 and multiplexers 4 so that, that's the same idea can you invent a decoder 4 to 16 using smaller components of the same kind like decoders 3 to 8 or decoders 2 to 4 and extra uh, logic gates that's the question if you like to solve the circuit using the plan c2 for example if you like to use the plan b you know what is it about now that you have the experience of the plan b in the multiplexer this time is pretty much the same you have the full example and the full tutorial on the web okay which consists of transferring this table as it is you know with the don't with the terms that don't care and everything else the eight outputs uh, this time is easy because the both inputs and outputs are almost vectors here so it is you can use the standard match and things like that as well or another possi another statement in bhdl so if you like to develop the plan b which is also there in the web as another tutorial you know solving the decoder three to eight using the plan b behaviorally which means transferring the table as it is by means of an schema or by means of flowchart as you like this idea of if enable is one and the data is six this is the operation data out or y out is zero one zero 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 everywhere so only one one in the six that's the the kind of if else uh, flow chart that you can get if you go through this idea of high level design which means copying the table as a flow chart or extract strictly as an schema to be hdl and then there is the plan a and the plan a is you like for this kind of chips even it is the the easier one it's the easier one because you know you have to think about the logic equations and this time it, it, you see it's not that complicated as well to getting the products or sums or max terms or min terms equations of the every single output what is what you have to say here is that difficult what do you say you have yes a lot of outputs in here you have y7 y6 and y7 is going to be a function of all the inputs e and the vector d so y6 the same a function of the enable and the data and this way all of them y0 a function of enabling and the data input so which is this function can you uh, can you answer the question how many mean terms any one of the outputs has which is a, related to the question that you have all the time in mind how long is this table what is what you have to say here how long is this table naturally that means taking a look at the number of inputs if you have four inputs you have 16 combinations even if you are you know representing the table that simpler in this simpler form using nine rows or even less you see one two three dot 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 and the final row even if you are simplifying the table you are able all the time to answer this important question 
how complicated is the circuit, which is how many rows, how many different combinations you can generate here. And naturally, this is to raise it to the power 4, because you have 4 inputs, and this is 16 different combinations. So in the end, this time, unlikely with the MOOCs, this time it is very possible to solve the circuit using max terms or min terms. But what is what you have to say? It is simpler using max terms or simpler using min terms. You have the circuit full of zeros everywhere, but a very few number of ones. So I guess that, for example, y6 to, to just pinpoint to a given equation, you know, y6, let's generate the number, which is, you know, something like this. When enabled and when you apply the number 6, you have a 0, a 1, and then 0 everywhere else. So, how many min terms has the function 6? How many max terms? So, if you answer the question, you very well can say that y6 has a single min term. So, the sum of min terms is reduced to single min term. But you have a long product of max terms. After to up to 15 different terms. So this means that the equation using max terms is going to be more difficult to represent, more impractical indeed, than the equation using min terms. So if you now continue this development, you know, which is already associated to the plan A, you know, equations, if you go like that, following this line of reasoning, already associating the specifications to a given plan, plan A, you know, generating equations, not because you like it, but because you have later on the idea of developing the equations in VHDL, translating them into VHDL. So now if you have to get the equations, you know, this time it's not even necessary to use the minimizer, because it's that clear. You see how many min terms you have, for example, for the output y6, so only one. So how to write that min term? Well, it is that simple, one, 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 zero. So the y6, if you keep an eye on the circuit, is simply e, well, if you, you can even start now that you know how it works using the com compact form. Uh, and this is simply the min term. 1, 1, 1, 0, you know, that's the min term 14, which expanded using the literals, it is e and data 2 and data 1 and data 0, and that's all, data 0, not. That's the min term 14 of the second. And then what? The what? And that's all, right? So this is also equivalent to you see, at the product of max terms, uh, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 13, and then skip, you have to skip the 14, because the 14 is G, it's the min term, so 15. That's the other equation also valid for describing y6, and as you see, is a lot simpler to describe it using the min term. And the same for y7. Now if you turn to y to write y7, you only have to say that the y7 is the min term uh, 15 in this function. That's all. Or if you are now down to the or do the the y0, y0 is again a single one and 15 zeros. So the same way you can say that this is the min term, you know, small letters to represent the min term, and this is the product that you have to take into account. M, uh, what? M8. So this is E and D2 and D1 and D0, and because it's the 0, 0, 0, and you are talking about min terms, is E, active high, you know, not D2, not D1, not, and D0, not. That's the function of the sick. Well, uh, so you've got it. If you've got the equations now, well, yes, you have eight of them, but, you know, they are that simple, a simple min term. So there is nothing else to say, but 
if you like to continue, you have to take a plan A BHDL file and adapt it to the set of equations that you've got here. And that's all. Perhaps because this is a decoder, perhaps the mean terms, sometimes you will find books where the mean terms or these equations are uh, worked in a way that they are considering, you know, the circuit without the E or the E set aside, you know, because, uh, well, what I mean? Well, I mean that if you like, you can consider the circuit like this, you know, like if it had to be another inter an internal circuit, you may call it circuit uh, Z, for example, and then the E, the E that goes straight to every single output. So this is the Y7, the Y6, another AND. You see, the E blocks every output. So if E happens to be zero, if E is zero, you have zero everywhere. Okay? So you can do that for all the outputs. And then y0, so you have a circuit very much like this. So the E blocking the outputs of this circuit Z. I like to do that thing of giving the circuits different names because they are not exactly the same. You see, the, the one which has, let me use a different color because this is again the important concept to get your ideas clear and that is good to do that here because these are you know initial circuits so it's a good idea to do it well so this is what you've got okay and what is what you've got well the decoder uh, underscore three to eight let's not change it so the decoder three to eight has that number of inputs three wires that are leveled D down to zero and then outputs that are leveled Y7, Y6 down to Y0. That's what you've got here, okay? So if this is what you've got, you like to, for example, go around the equations a little bit and imagining that situation, for example, because enabling, you see the E is here, the E is in the mean term 15, so it's E, D2, D1, and D0, so again E, and E is everywhere, so you, if you like, you can make a common factor of this E. So E, it's like that, goes set aside, goes this way, as a as an extra blocking gate and this type because it's active high but if the circuit that you have in mind is the decoder 3 to 8 from this 74 138 you know if you like to have ones all the time blocking the circuit meaning disabling the circuit with ones everywhere if you like a one everywhere you only have to replace the ands by an or and driving the enable like this. When enabled is high, if the circuit is active, low, low, you, you know, everything is, is high. So the circuit Z has these inputs only, the D and the Ys. So this means that if you like, you can redraw the true table of this circuit Z. And if you redraw the table, you see, you only have to keep in mind that this table is D2, D1, and D0, and then the double line that separates inputs and outputs, you see, and then Y7, Y6, Y5, Y4, Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0, you see. So this is now without the E, because you see the E goes goes apart, goes to another circuit, you know, the ANS. So the circuit Z has only this vector D, so it, it is only, you see, uh, the subsection of the, 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 the decoding subsection, the one that is going to generate 
the one hot code. So zero 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 means zero 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 one. Uh, zero zero one means zero 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 one zero, and in this way you can go down to the seven, which is one here, and then zero 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 zero. That's that's what you like to represent as the secret Z three table. Okay. So very well. So if this is your, you know, soup sub table generated from the general picture now you can write the equations and the equations are going to be uh, let me do that here for example because i need just some white space i like to you know generate the equations from this sub table okay so now it is easy you know the y zero for the circuit set is like this uh, only one one again you see you have only one one and then zeros everywhere else so if you have zeros everywhere else there is only one one only one mean term and now what look at this the y zero has only one mean term and which one the mean term zero the y one has a single mean term again and the mean term is not the nine Okay, so you see, setting apart the E, what you've got is the mean term 0, the mean term 1, and the mean term 7. So in this way, you may say that the circuit is even easier to remember the way it works, because the outputs are related to the binary code. Okay, if any y i, you see, from from 0, i, 7, any y, i is just the mean term with the index i. That's simple. So the mean term 0, d2 and d1 and d0, not, 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 because this is the 0, 0, 0 in binary. And this is the way you represent it when you are taking the mean term of the function, which is, you know, representing this one here d naught, d0 naught, d1 naught, that's it. Okay, so yes, that's the decoder and we can talk just not about many more things. That is more or less the general theory that you will find when talking about the specifications, you see, and already advancing towards the design of the SIG using equations, plan A. All right, if this is what you are planning now, you can just work the equations almost immediately because the circuit has no more complication. That's all. So here in Dixie's web, you have now examples on how to develop, well, how to finish the plan A, which means getting the VHDL, uh, finish the plan B, which is, as I said, transferring this table as it is, forget about the min terms and the max terms and everything else, but just try to copy the table as it is in VHDL. Or the plan C2, which yes, is interesting, perhaps requires another explanation, but not that difficult as well. I guess that in 10 minutes recording, I can show you how to invent, uh, you know, from this table, with the same idea with the MOOCs in mind. How to invent uh, decoder 38, for example, let's make it easy, using two to four decoders. So, well, right, imagining that you have this decoding subtable subdivided into tables because, you know, uh, one, 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 and then again, one, 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 one. So here, you will have one of the signals, d2, d1, or d0, that is, it is used for selecting which one of the two decoders, 2 to 4, is going to work, while the other is going to be kept uh, disabled. Perhaps in this, that's an interesting example. Perhaps I will record it one of these days, 
and I will show it to you. The reasoning, you know what, what is the important thing here? It's not just go and write equations, but the idea, you know, the beginning of it. If you have this table, how can you infer a second? Yes, everybody knows that you can go to a book and you can copy it as it is. Someone has invented it, but you know, the good thing here is that perhaps it's interesting for you to, to, to put into the place of an engineer who has no idea now how to do that. So if you have the symbol and the table, how can you do that job of inventing a decoder 3 to 8 using components, for example, decoders 1 to 2, an extra logic? How can you do that? Okay, so that's all that at this introductory level we can talk about the specifications of simple binary decoders. Then we can do the same for encoding or demultiplexing and perhaps another circuit, okay? So that's the idea of these P2 projects. Invent, again, typical circuits. Typical circuits like the 74 LS Typical, I mean typical, I mean commercial, 138. So let's invent a commercial circuit, not in one way, but in three ways and with a multiple variations, for example, because you are considering active low or active high outputs or inputs and etc. So this is what on a stake, it is what you have to consider in this pitch. Okay, perhaps it's also interesting to visit here in P2, okay, the tutorial, whatever of them, the plan A or the plan B, because here you have the complete discussion of this chip. And one of the pictures is that one here, the P-Check 3, on an example timing diagram to be translated later into a test bench, a stimulus file for solving the VHDL simulation. So that kind of circuit is not that difficult to, to organize. Indeed, it is simple because there is the list of inputs here, enable and the input code in binary. You see, when you are inputting this vector, the number two, what you are doing is inputting the 0, 1, 0 code, the 3, the 0, 1, 1, and so that you have eight possibilities, the eight binary codes that accompanying the enable input allows you to manage the device. So, for example, when enable is low with zero, you have the circuit completely disabled. Exactly. The, all the signals are zero. Then, in the other periods of time, for example, when you are enabling the chip, now the translation of binary to one hot is what counts here in this kind of decoder. For example, now in this period of time, from this point to this point, you've got the number two, okay? And the two means that what are you driving here with a one is the channel the output to you see this is what you are driving a one keeping all the other signals at zero voltage that that's the case and that is for all the binary codes if you are driving the five this is one zero one in binary what you th this device translate this binary into one hot like that zero in the y7 zero in the y6 one in the output corresponding to the index of the data vector and then zero everywhere else. This is a kind of a, hot, uh, a code which you see is it is like zero zero one. If you consider all the outputs as you know a binary combination, a binary information, you have zero zero one zero uh, zero, 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 zero. You see, this is why you have a single one active. This is why this code, you know, the the code three to eight active high, it's generating in the end. Well, 
it's another way to see it okay what counts here is that you are translating the number in binary into a one at the corresponding output.